Texacorum. And so let's make a consent agenda. So item number, well, I really like to have letters for consent, but we'll just keep on rolling. Um, so item number one, RS 2023-2881. Don't know why that was so hard to get out. Um, let's do that on consent. The item number two, consent. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Item three is on consent. Item four is on consent. That is, uh, well, I'll read it when we get there. Okay, and then we've got late items. That's all we can do. So, all right, going through consent agenda, RS 2023 2081 recognizes Lorenzo Washington's efforts and contributions to preserve the music legacies of North Nashville and historic Jefferson Street. Item number two is RS 2023-2082, recognizes the opening of the Salvadorian Consulate General's Office and welcoming Consulate General of El Salvador to Nashville. Thank you for not putting his name in the caption because I probably butchered that, Sandra. Um, item number three, RS 2023-2083, is recognizing the contributions of Delta Sigma Theta, Sigma Theta, to public service and designating March 3rd as Delta Day in Nashville. I think we're a little late on that one. Item number four, RS 2023-2084, supports Earth Hour 2023 on Saturday, March 25th, 2023 from 8.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. And if y'all remember, that's when Council Lady Allen shows up at your house and turns off your power. <laughs> so, um, do I have a motion? I've got a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Any abstentions? All right. Great. Taking us to our late items. The first one is a late filed resolution by Council Lady Zuara and myself that I'm going to take up. It's a, a resolution condemning recent acts of anti Semitism in Nashville and Davidson County, declaring Nashville to be a welcoming place for all, and requests the Metro Human Relations Commission to provide recommendations and solutions to fight hate. Do I have a motion? I have a motion and a second. Um, so, Obviously, this is emergently filed because the um, the most recent events of, of hate displayed in our community happened over the weekend. A lot of it in my district. I know in other, dis other areas across town. But over the last year, two years, maybe three years now, my district and Councilman Druffel's district has been hit with a lot of anti-Semitic leaflets. And enough is enough. And thoughts and prayers is not enough. And so what we, um, when Council Lady Sawara was filing this, I reached out to her through the council office to say, let's take it a step further and ask the Human Relations Commission to come up with some recommendations and some, you know, they are, they are the subject matter experts in this. I mean, some of us maybe, most, most of us are not. So asking for their guidance and advice. So that's the content and the emergency filing status. So we can take those separately if you all have got questions on either. Y'all okay with emergency? Mm -hmm. Okay on content? Yes. All right. All right. Late filed amendment to BL 2023-1715 by Hauser, an ordinance to amend Title 17 of the Metropolitan Code. Um, we're not voting on content here. This is just an emergency rule 13 filing. So, um, <coughs> Council Lady Hauser, why are you late? Um, be because they thought the attorneys over the liquor licensing and the attorneys over the zoning, the zoning thought that they, they each thought the other one had sent it. And all this does is it just removes the percentages of alcohol content because this distillery is actually going to be a lower alcohol content than what was originally written in here. Originally it was written in uh, alcohol content of 8%. But there's going to be more like five or six percent. So there's they've just removed the language of the percent of alcohol. That's all this did. What if in the future they want to go up? Well, then they'll have to come back. Will they have to come back, Margaret, or is this open door? <laughs> no, this is a it, it, which she says correct. It's it's kind of a housekeeping amendment just to make the um, the SP consistent with what is already required under state law. Mr. Bell, any opinions? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, you're in the room. I don't you think get you. We can open door. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not easy to do that. No. 
just thought we should get subject matter experts as we've got them. Um, is there any reason, so where is this in, um, where's your bill? Is it on, is it on, on first third? reading? It's on third reading. third reading. Okay, is there a reason why it can't wait until um, to be timely filed? We can do it next time if you don't want to accept it today. If there's not an emergency, then I don't think that we need to move it forward. Thoughts? Do, you know so when do I need planning? to pull it from? I don't have any additional information on the status of the project. Do you know when they're planning to start the work? As soon as they can. You just want another beer place in Bellevue. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's I know Bellevue. Not, they're already I'm there. I'm going to ask another place to get it Bellevue. Look, <laughs> times are tough. There's an opportunity for additional alcohol to be produced. No, this is not another location. <laughs> right, right, right. This is right, in the right. current location. Yes. Yes. The current footprint, they're just changing yeah. one product line from beer to uh, distilled. That's all it is. And this location yeah. has served much harder things in the past, mm -hmm. so that's not what my concern is. My concern is the precedent setting of it's, is it an emergency or not? Mm -hmm. And that is what is before us today, is whether it's an emergency or not. Can it wait? Um, is it going to throw off their financing? Is it going to delay or end the project? They're already up and operating. So can it wait two weeks, or does it have to be done it doesn't suspension. have to be done today. They were just hoping to keep everything on track. Committee? John? So if we don't do this Thoughts? today, do I need to pull you just defer defer my it. third to next time in? I, I'm okay with it going, but yes. Yeah. Because yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm kind of like, well, isn't the work already done? <coughs> mm -hmm. I mean, and wouldn't it be more administrative work to to timely file right. something? Mm -hmm. Well, in this case, because it's already they already drafted it. It's already here. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Well, that's how all late filings are. I understand. And if we're going to let late filings that aren't emergencies come in, what does that mean? I mean, it's y'all's next term that you're setting precedence for. It's a call it borderline and send it on its way. Okay. Just because Dave wants to lose in it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <It's> all right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. We're good. So what do we do? Oh, you're we're good. good. You, yeah, out, good. Uh, out there, you'll ask for... Um, the committee report from rules, the way you would ask for the other committee right. reports. And so my third will need to get deferred then, since this is not No, we're saying, you're okay. Okay. we're saying you're good to go. You're oh, good we're to good move to it. go. Okay, yes. I'm sorry. I, yeah. yeah, you're good to move it. You're back and forth. Sorry, I wasn't sure what you said. And Berkeley, we've already announced that you'll be coming by everybody's house. You and Newton are splitting up the council between 8.30 and 9 on March 25th. Is that what you're in here for? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a friendly amendment I put on the resolution. All right, uh, Hancock, we've got late filed substitution to BL 2023. I am having trouble with the year tonight. Uh, 1728, an ordinance to amend, da 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 da. We're not, we're not dealing with substance, we're on a rule, uh, rule filing. So, um, why are we, it's a late filed substitute. What's the emergency? So, we had a timely filed substitute. And then we received two additional requests to remove themselves from this rezoning on one on Monday and one on Tuesday. Both of them were notarized, and one was dated March 3rd and one March 8th. And I don't know why it took the mail so long to arrive, but that's all it took it. And I feel like they went to so much trouble to do that, and there's hundreds of property owners that are anxious for this to finish that I don't want to delay. What reading are you on? Third. So it's already pending legislation, right? Margaret? Uh, yes. So, I mean, so if it was timely filed next time, the pending, whether a permit could be pulled and issued now or then doesn't change. Has the legislature not passed the bill that eliminates pending legislation? I was going to say, mm -hmm. to the extent that it, that is still something that it's we still are going to consider. Is it a thing? Talk about things moving fast. Yeah. 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 Is there a pending legislation? <laughs> Who is pending le legislation trumps the other. Yeah. Uh, theirs, theirs trumps us. Yeah. Um, no okay, again, slippery slope of getting us right back to where we are and what we have been debating the whole year about emergency yes. filings. If we're going to let everything be late filed and emergency filing okay, then then we might as well get rid of filing deadlines in Rule 13. Margaret, what chaos would that give to your office? I, I was distracted by another council member. Can you just... If we're not going to follow or enforce Rule 13 for late files, then maybe we need to get rid of filing deadlines, and what kind of chaos would that do to the office? It would be... Uh, it, we 
should not do this. We should not get rid of deadlines. Yeah, I'm not proposing getting rid of deadlines. I'm just proposing keeping hundreds of constituents happy both sides of the aisle. I, the broader conversation here that I've brought up over my tenure as chair before that is that we are essentially never following, we are very rarely, if ever, following Rule 13. And I especially feel like if it's a rules member asking for it when it is not an emergency, then what are we saying about our own rules and the respect of the rules and of each other in the body? So I think just think on that. And um, are we down a quorum? Are we still quorum? She's still quorum. We are. We're, okay, we're right good. Sorry. Um, all right, Tanya, what do you want to do? I'd still like to move forward with it. I have lots of constituents just resting their hopes and desires on having this finished. They've been working on it since June. Okay, I'm not going to belabor the point that it essentially has the same effect. Um, Rosenberg, what is your thought? It feels not substantive. Rutherford. I'm good with it moving forward. All right. Okay, so um, elections and confirmation. Um, and Leah, we're going to take you and Derek Bell. If y'all will bring, roll up your seats. Okay. Come up to our, um, our hot seats, uh -huh. please. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm like, did I save enough time to have fun with the, everybody else that's here on this? So, <laughs> um, all right, so we've got Arts Commission appointment of Mr. Derek Bell for a term expiring on January 1, 2027. And the Arts Commission appointment of Ms. Leah Dupree Love for a term expiring on January 1, 2027. And the, oh, wait, I'm sorry, Carol. I didn't even see that you were, you were the next name. Please scoot up, too. Mm -hmm. Chancellor. <laughs> it's okay. Is that enough room? Okay. And so you are, you've got a different expiration date. You are um, for a term expiring on February 24th, 2026 for uh, the Arts Commission as well. And so you're all first time appointees, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so uh, do you all live in Davidson County? Yes. yes. You're all registered voters here. Yes. Um, do you serve on any other Metro boards or commissions? Okay, um, Mr. Bell, let's start with you. We received your questionnaire late. Typically, that would trigger a deferral of you, but I heard that you had a good reason for it being late. I was exploring the arts in Portugal, and I had very <laughs> mediocre Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> that works for me. <laughs> we'll, we'll take that. Thank you. Um, all right, so uh, we'll just keep you on the hot seat. Why do you want to serve on the Arts Commission? Well, I'm an endangered species. I'm a Nashville native. I know some others in this room as well. And uh, I just think that Nashville's at a really important inflection point. I think it's really exciting that our identity is changing very quickly. And I think the arts has a huge profound effect. You know, I have a long construction background. Uh, we do have this construction funding that's, that's going to be, uh, I think, huge, you know, going back to the Bredesen era. Um, and I've just always been involved in the built environment. And I think that the trajectory of, what, of where Nashville's going and uh, I don't know, I'm just very passionate. I'm really involved in the Wedgwood Houston area, which you know has is sort of its own uh, arts identity. And I've just been very involved in that and all the effort we've put into the arts in that district has just really paid back and really been huge for uh, changing that area and for giving it this strong creative uh, identity. Wonderful, Leah? Oh, so I am not a Nashville native, but I've been to na in Nashville for quite some time and I think it will be fun. I think it will be fun to serve on the Arts Commission. Uh, we were talking before we got in here about how the world is kind of understanding that arts is so important. You know, they've started to add the A in STEM because arts is just as important as, you know, the sciences and all, all those other things. And I think that if we have a community who is involved with the arts, whatever that is, music, painting, <coughs> theater, whatever that looks like, then we'll just have a better society because people are happy. Like when you're performing, when you're doing things, people are excited and you feel good. You, you know what music, if a, if a song comes on, you're like, I remember what I was doing. I was probably in high school or I was in college. And so like all of that is fun and I think it'll just make Nashville even better because we're great. Chancellor? I think I sent a letter to a governor once that said, I really want to be involved with the arts and I would like to be appointed to the Tennessee Arts Commission, <coughs> which happened. 
and I served on the board at Watkins School of Art, Film, and Design. I have always liked to think that I could paint, but I can't. And <coughs> I just want to say Donna Nicely, the former director of the library, has an exhibit of her watercolors that are exceptional at the Green Hills Library. So if you have a chance to go by and see it, and I have some on my phone, um, this is a non-confrontational uh, board. You just said it's happy. I can't think of much that you do with the metropolitan government where you have good vibes. And this is very enriching. One of the things that the Tennessee Arts Commission did was deal with a grant in the city of Knoxville where arts were made a part of the curriculum in conjunction with math and science. And because art really is involved in math and science, if you look at how you have to deal with the perspective in that picture, if you look at how the placem is made, nothing is constructed without some attribution to arts and the way in which it survives in the community. That's what most of us want, is to have a neighborhood where we enjoy the scenery, we enjoy uh, the beauty. And I have had a lot of conflict over the last 20 years, <laughs> I might know. And I think this is a not conflict entity where I will be able to uh, relish participating with people who enjoy the arts. That's why I want to be there. I am scared to disagree with you, but I'm pretty sure there will be some sort of, um, given given the way the state has treated us this year, I'm sure there could be some conflict on what we think is art and they think is art. Um, but I think that's wonderful. You all are well, very thoughtful with that. Also triggered a few responses. Yes. So yeah, yeah. It it does tend to um, trigger responses, and that is the emotional thing about art. It should provoke you in some way, either feeling positive or negative, happy or sad. You can't look at some art with regards to that which came out of the concentration camps without a feeling of real despondency and sadness. You have a great artist here in town who has done a lot of black and white in that way. Um, and he was brought over by Annette Eskin as a refugee. Paul um, Zeppelin. Is his name. I think he now might be retired from TSU, but he is a Russian refugee, and it's pretty stark. So art does trigger a lot of things in individuals, um, but as I said, I'm not one who can draw, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, John, questions? Uh, no, I'm good with all three. Okay, Tanya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good with all three. Dave. Great. Let's do it. <laughs> you can see, like, this is a commission that we have lots of questions. Actually, last time that we had um, some arts commission appointees, I know y'all are new, but I'm sure you're aware that in the last year or so there had been some staff issues and some, some reports that came out in the news of some some feeling of bias on, in leadership and things like that. And Are you familiar with that? Have any thoughts on how the commission can work together to kind of get the focus back on arts and, and making sure there's no conflict amongst staff? I mean, again, you're new, so. I read a news article. I couldn't quite figure out what was going on. And I know that the executive either retired or was replaced, so there's a new person on board. I don't know who that is. And it looks like they did what you did and referred to the human relations uh, officer for Metro. And I think that that is a good way to deal with something where people feel marginalized, perhaps. But that's not the focus of the commission. I think the focus of the commission is the awarding of the grants. And because I was on the Tennessee Arts Commission, I actually took the opportunity to participate with the Metro Arts Commission. And I have to say, that is a marvelous way to distribute money. Uh, you can't go wrong with it. And if you've never done it, um, really? 
wonderful experience. <laughs> Oh, no, I get excited when I get a Thrive Grant in my district, right? I mean, you all have gotten them, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, not Dave, but you've gotten them, and that is, that's why you need more alcohol. It, it is the way that the grant awards are done the way that I participated in them. There is no way in which anybody can pre-select or predetermine or inject um, what I call adverse effects to the awarding of the grants because... Most of it is anonymous. You rank whatever the, uh, and I have to say, it's amazing. You rank from one to a hundred, and you only have so much money in a grant. Say you have eighty thousand, and you have people applying for a five thousand, twelve thousand, ten thousand dollar grant. Your symphony, your uh, Cheekwood, not yeah, Cheekwood, and Centennial. All these places that want money, they have a limited amount that they're asking for. You have like 18 people sitting in a room, the person comes in, the director, they make their presentation, they have a limited time, seven to 10 minutes and they're out. And then you evaluate them on this criteria. That sheet goes there. Nobody talks. At the end, all those numbers are added up and the break is amazing. You'll have 98% to somebody who wants a $10,000 grant because you've read the grant application and you've heard from the person, you rank people who come in who just want to start a new art venture, their grant application is woefully uh, poor. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't award anybody that money until you thought that it would be handled properly. So the break goes 98, 96, 92, 88, 87. When you get down to about 74, you're out of money. Mm -hmm. Nobody else gets any more. It's a wonderful process. I don't know if you all knew that, but now you do. Well, I was just going to say that it's almost, if, if you stay on mission and you are a rule follower, which I appreciate the way you run this committee, like it just makes me happy. But um, <laughs> in my former life, I was a grant reviewer for the federal government and it's almost, it's almost difficult to do, not do it correctly because you stay on your rubric and you, yeah. Yeah. and so you have to be very intentional not to do it correctly, I'll say that. And it um, sounds like on rule 13 or whatever it is that you were talking about, <laughs> There's consensus here that if it's a late filed with regards to procedural and not substantive, you might have a waiver for procedural to allow you to move forward, and that way you would be ab abiding by the rule on substantive matters, not let procedural drag you down. Yeah. I wonder, and this is something I guess I'm charging y'all to figure out, and then yes, Dave, I'll let us leave. I enjoy having conversation with our board appointees. Um, I'm enjoying this too, as a matter of fact. <laughs> usually, usually you're over there like giving me the look of get us out well, of here. Well, usually you're just running. Never mind. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, again, I have, been, I have been at my house uh, a lot, only talking to the dog. Um, I wonder if there is some supplemental money that we can give in the budget process or finance um, procurement or the Center for Nonprofit Development could do grant writing for art applicants or something. So I guess that's my challenge to y'all is, mm -hmm. is because they may have a great project, but something. they have no, I mean, right. grants are not easy to, no, to not. I mean, you need to know what you're doing. And mm -hmm. I know that they have, I know Center for Nonprofit Management has those um, workshops. Maybe we can do it for artists. Because my observation was, the one that I remember was the Chinese uh, New Year's Festival. And this was a, a little group of people who had gotten together. And I think you were asking for $5,000, but the grant was just so poorly written. Mm -hmm. And if they had gone to the Center for Nonprofits, they might have gotten some help. Mm -hmm. So there may be, if, if, I mean, the Center for Nonprofit also has to be paid. Right, right. If there is some funding available for that in the Metro budget, yeah. you might consider. Mm -hmm. I'm not you might want to, you know, talk to, who, who is the chair over that now? I forget. Chair of the Powerful Budget and Finance Committee. That no, no, Kevin the, it's our that arts, <laughs> um, <laughs> the committee that we have arts under now. Oh, anyway, yeah, no. thank you all. Um, thank you. Uh, let's see here. I have a motion arts and a committee. second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any against? Any abstentions? All right, y'all. We'll see you in the big room. Thank and you. so we do have the historic commission appointment of Dr. Um, Celso Thomas Castillo, yeah. and um, he sure cannot he be here again. We pulled his, uh, the mayor pulled his and so, so they're going to pull it, and it's my understanding that Vice Mayor Shulman will right. do the appointment, and so we'll just go through. They've just traveled and have not been able to get here. So um, we will...
just go sit. Right. <laughs> Do you want that as with a draw with a drawn or indefinitely deferred? What does it with matter? Drawn. Okay. With drawn. <clears throat> okay, great. That concludes okay. our day. Thank you. Do you need parking pass? There you go. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I appreciate you. Good to see you.